One of our brethren some years ago spoke of the payment of tithing as fire insurance. Nonetheless, the word of the Lord is clear that those who do not keep the commandments and observe the laws of God shall be burned at the time of his coming, for that shall be a day of judgment, a day of sifting, a day of separating the good from the evil. I would venture a personal opinion that no event has occurred in all the history of the earth as dreadful as will be the day of the second coming, as fraught with the destructive forces of nature, as consequential for the nations of the earth, as terrible for the wicked, and as wonderful for the righteous. Sure, that was pretty good song. So, uh, today I was inspired to watch the pilot episodes of Caprica and the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. Armageddon, day that shall burn as an oven. And learn more of the uh, plot of Mark Zuckerberg with his creation of Meta. He took that straight from Caprica. And so we already have learned that he betrayed America with the 2016 election. But by creating Meta, he's back at it again and to a worse degree. So if you've fallen prey to Meta, oops. So let me shut it down to the page. One eighty-six. Sure. Oh, right, the one mighty and strong. That's another video. <laughs> 397 is what we're looking for for this video. Enrichment H. In 2002, as I'm scrolling down for it, the church came out with a new Doctrine and Covenants manual that exposes their plot to overthrow the government. In 2002, I was working for the church with their reformatting of the scriptures for the 2009 edition for Spanish speaking in the quad. But the CES department were in charge of this manual. <clears throat> this is what they revealed. And I had a person comment, a very long comment. I don't know how he expects me to reply other than to do this video and let him know that I've seen it. And uh, have uh, seen that the 
manual explains your answer from what's contained in this book. <clears throat> so you have the materials to get your answer that you were asking me for. <clears throat> and so I'll approve your comment and then link you to this video if I can remember. I did a sealed portion video earlier today that I wasn't sure if I'd post in a video or not. Uh, it's because of checking the news this morning. There are a couple of things that I needed to make sure at least got into the historical records of uh, the utter destruction of the human race by your command. So say we all. We need to start having babies. Very cute, attractive Cylon babies. <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah, the genius daughter who uh, expands and creates Meta that is then used by Daddy for his Cylon machines. You know, that was very emotional for me. But uh, Iceland was one of the other news stories that I found out about afterward. And so we'll touch on this before we get to Enrichment Age. Hi. Uh, the Iceland volcano has exploded. And... Of course, the Icelanders refuse to leave their land and are sacrificing their women and children to the volcano god, blaming the volcano god for murdering the women and children, refusing to evacuate the land. <laughs> of course not. Everybody's fleeing for their lives. During World War II, and even World War I, during the wars when the enemy invaded the land, the first people to be evacuated were the women and children. The whole, uh, C.H. Lewis, is that him? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series? Yeah, what do you think that was based upon? War, the fleeing of children to save their lives to preserve the human race. And so then the children and their trauma and PTSD go into taking drugs and fantasize about walking through closets into fantasy worlds and seeing Judah the lion sacrificing his life. <laughs> yeah, there are some Christian replacement of Judaism prophecy. If I got the author's name right or not. And so when we see Islam with the Palestinian Gazans and we see that the women and children are refusing to flee during wartime and they get injured, and they die, and they go to the hospitals, and bombs take out the power, and electrical, and even the buildings by their own people. And women and children die, and those who are injured die. And they're injured because they didn't leave. And then they die being injured because they didn't leave. And the world is condemning Israel because the women and children didn't leave. They stayed behind to be martyrs, willing participants to stand up against Israel. 
purposely forgetting Hamas started it. And it doesn't matter if Israel had a lapse in intelligence that allowed the opening for Hamas to take, or whether it was purposely done for Hamas to take it. The fact is, Hamas attacked. Not Israel, Hamas. And Hamas are using the women and the children and the injured and the poor to hide behind. So how is Israel going to defend themselves against Hamas if Hamas is using the weak to hide behind? They have no choice but to fight and take out those who aid and give comfort and choose to be a martyr for Hamas. There are no innocents. Those who are innocent have fled and are trying to get through Egypt. Israel was not bombing down in Egypt. So don't be fooled by the news who have turned their back on Israel too. Don't be fooled by the pro-Palestinian protests all over the world that are turning violent. This is a war tactic of Islam. When everybody else flees, Islamists stay to be martyrs. Now, early pre-Christians who were post-Jews, who were in that intermediary period, who claimed the forecoming of a Christ using a Jewish scripture as their source text for that were also purposely being martyrs for their cause wanting to be a Christ figure just like their Jesus in the text they chose but all this they were getting fooled, not knowing the learning of the Jews anymore, and paving the way for Roman Emperor Constantine to create Christianity, which likewise became militant, unless we forget the Spanish Inquisition, which is a direct result of Roman Emperor Constantine. The fruits of Christianity are evil. The fruits of Islam are evil. It's very blatantly obvious. And so, the Book of Mormon is the latter-day prophecy scripture for Mormons. Specifically, for Mormons. That's why missionaries are supposed to be going out giving people the Book of Mormon warning about the latter days and thus people choose to be converts rather than be threatened to be a convert and pay the church money through a pyramid scheme extortion threat so that they can prepare for the latter days. That was the whole purpose of the second vision. It wasn't about the restoration of the gospel. The prophets lied to you. And so, yeah, we got to cover this too. We are in the latter days. I've been going over it with you since 2016 when I told you about the sign in the heaven of the total solar eclipse over the United States of America. I knew what it meant because of my education, experience, publications, decipherments, and discoveries therefrom. I am the expert in the field. And here I am, the expert in the field, seeing the warning sign. I was curious about the tetrad, 
prior to, where Perry, Packer, and Scott bit the big one, and but didn't make the connection like I did with the total solar eclipse. See, the tetrad was at first just perceived as, oh, cool, the ancients were right in their interpretation. But solar eclipse, I knew very well what that meant. And that's still, to this day, my number one video because the church was pissed and ordered YouTube to silence my voice ever since. And so if you're brand new, that's why. Blame the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for putting your life in danger through YouTube. And so the eclipse that we had earlier this year, not October, which was the second day of darkness, the one that was over Australia, there in the Pacific, or, well, in the, over Australia. <laughs> that I also recognized as a prophecy of the latter days as well. As I told you about Samson and the stories of Samson, where he takes the tales of the foxes and burns down the fields of the Philistines of Gaza, Palestine. But the use of foxes is the connection that I figured out. Because it's not over the United States of America. And so it's not the th three days of darkness which are over America, which means it's not Jerusalem, but the war is in Jerusalem. That's because of Islam and their altered interpretation of the Jewish prophecies. This is how evil they are. Yes, you too, Christians, you're all foaming at the mouth waiting for Jesus, Trinitarian Jesus, just like Mormons, likewise. <gasps> This is it. Jesus is coming. Nelson, he said, Jesus is coming. Mm -mm. You cannot produce reality from not real. Will not happen. It is the Jewish prophecies from the Jewish scriptures with Jewish interpretation for the Jewish Christ of the latter days. There is no other interpretation. You are wrong to do so. You are anti-Semitic for doing so. No matter how you justify it. You are in the wrong if you do not use the Jewish interpretation. And so, Fox 13 News, or not Fox 13, Fox News. Fox. Tales of foxes. <clears throat> got busted in the courts for lying to its public, to its viewership. And it was over the 2020 election, claiming that Dominion voting machines were rigged. Dominion sued and won. Fox got busted, Tucker got fired, and others exposed their true feelings about Fox. And Rupert Murdoch eventually stood down, and his son's now taken over. Fox got destroyed for lying, as supposedly presenting themselves as the press, a violation of the First Amendment. You do not have freedom of the press to lie to the public. And so, fortunately, Fox got punished for that. It's unfortunate that the DOJ did not do anything to them, but 
nonetheless. But there's a baby name meaning of fox. Todd. And I knew that because of my brother. And as I got this apartment back in that time, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints knew they needed to silence me before our April conference because they're always up to something for conference and I'm the one who always exposes it before even conference begins this year it was all about the name <laughs> and was able to successfully get a couple of videos into the top 10 as a result despite YouTube silencing my channel all these years <clears throat> and according to the lawyer that my brother paid for that's how I found out that the church had threatened him to attack me so, two foxes getting in trouble with the law. And I was able to turn it back on the church. Burn down their field. Oh, you don't know that my last name means sun god. Samson, sun king. Where have you been? Oh, right. YouTube silenced you. Got it. Or kept silenced me to keep you from seeing me. And so, yes, if you're thinking in terms of Christian or Islamic Jesus, you're wrong. Remember? So the Book of Mormon teaches you that Joseph is the founding Christ of Mormonism. And that he is a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. So that Mormons would know who to look for in the latter days and not be deceived by a false prophet whose name would be Lucifer, baby name meaning, of the great and abominable church of which Mormons would be held in bondage to. Section 103 verse 16. But apparently, God is not through with my brother. Little did my brother know that he was not only fulfilling prophecy, that he would also be punished for his betrayal of his brother, the sun god. And so, yes, lots of Christians complain that it's abominable that Joseph Smith dared to blaspheme the theology by saying that Lucifer is Jesus' brother. There are dualisms also. Not only is the false prophet a brother, as that's what Mormons call each other, brothers and sisters, to Emmanuel, the true Christ but it's also the literal brother who betrays his brother as Judas and of course loses the battle because I'm the older brother but God is also upset with my brother for what he did as that's going to apparently be the next opportunity for the day that you'll burn as an oven. The burning. His birthday. As he attacked me on my birthday, Deuteronomy, the law of the Jews, chapter 19, now kicks in. God has judged my brother and has found him guilty. 
And so as he attacked me on my birthday, comes back around to bite my brother. But we'll see. The church keeps failing to hire assassins who can succeed. Islam is just the latest that they've paid with your tithing money. So, we can now get rid of that paper. On to Enrichment Age. The prophets have told us the latter days are going to be real and that we can't stop them. We can't tell people to cease fire and not go through with it. That there would be no way for the world to be righteous and thus stop Armageddon. Because the church made sure that they paid for it. <laughs> you got to pay attention to these guys. They are literally evil. And so, in this manual, there are a, a number of things that we'll just skim over for you. It starts off with an introduction referring to the Joseph Smith translation, which we call Moses, selections from the book of Moses, talking about Enoch. And because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints pulled the same stunt that Constantine did in turning the Jewish scriptures into literal history, so too did Brigham Young turn Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon into literal history as well. <coughs> this is not literal history. This is prophecy of the latter days. That's why Enoch comes back to Zion in the latter days. It's a prophecy. Not about some space alien <laughs> joining us here in Salt Lake City. <laughs> it's the Christ, Enoch, of the latter days. Coming for the first time as he on earth is Joseph Smith setting up the church. So this is the difference between turning this into literal history and reading it as prophecy for the latter days. <clears throat> and so then, the next segment, chapter, is the scriptures give authoritative information about the latter days. Well, yeah but not as literal history <laughs> as prophecy. The Book of Mormon, Lehi, not literal history. That's why it's an exact pattern match with Joseph Smith's second vision. Lehi's second vision, Jewish prophecy. Joseph Smith's second vision, Jewish prophecy. They're the same. So say we all, right? We need to start having babies. And the sad thing is, is that's what the church is doing with this. With a big extermination event. <coughs> with everybody at war. It is necessary to start having babies to keep the human race alive. And thus the church thinks they can then sneak in child bride polygamy as they've already set it up with the changes to the Law of Chastity in 2019, which I have been warning you, that used to be a, a top five. As it got, I think, bumped out of the top five to be in the top 10 still. And so then three signs to precede the Lord's second coming but I do not see Revelation chapter 12. That's the beginning of the latter days. John gives it to you. The day. The hour. And it's already happened. That's why I'm able to tell you it's the latter days. It's the final year of the latter days. That's how severely the church has silenced my voice from you. 
through YouTube. There have been lots of things that have happened already fulfilling the prophecies. That's why it's so frustrating for me to still be doing videos to brand new people who want to deny what has already happened who want to deny reality, who want to deny my life as they want to continue to argue that the Church of Jesus Christ is true and that the Book of Mormon is literal history and that Jesus is real it's extremely frustrating that these Mormons in the final year and we're getting down to the final days 12 more days till the 24th which is the next potential for the day that you'll burn as an oven for Islam to do as I've already been talking about it and so these signs have all been happening but the prophets aren't telling you about it instead they talk about the gospel will be restored signs that f that are part of the restoration of the gospel and in eventual expansion throughout the world <laughs> they're deceiving you as Nelson has tried to claim recently that because of the righteousness of the teenagers, there are now 72,000 virgins on missions. And so the church is saying that there's going to be no day that shall burn as an oven. Nope. 36 new missions next year. Nope. There will be no missionary work during war. Right? If you're still going on a mission during war, dear God, you are hypnotized big time. You are deep into the Kool-Aid. And so then they talk about the evils and the calamities and the judgments to come upon the rest of the people, the other. Because Mormons don't live in the world. They want you to believe that being in Utah will be the only safe place in the world. So that you would gather to Utah. Like my mom got fooled into believing. She's dead now. That's why my brother attacked. Because he didn't have mom to counsel him. <laughs> and she died with a sign in the heaven's date too that I was curious because it seemed like it also was a fulfillment of the dream that I had while the church was torturing me with whips and chains for six years of my life and for what? filing a petition for redress of grievances with the state of Utah which I came to learn is a terrorist threat. Can't, do, can't use your constitutional rights in the United, in Utah. Church will not let you. You are the enemy. How dare you? And that's it. Just those two. God. And so, yeah, they don't go into detail. And they don't cover Revelation chapter 12. And when they do talk about Revelation 12 in the New Testament manual, they only use the Joseph Smith translation part where it says God and his Christ. They don't explain it. They just repeat it. <laughs> and so, yes, my former sister-in-law who was a part-time seminary instructor used that as her justification and also tried to claim that we're not supposed to seek after signs 
Wrong word. Yes, it's the same word, but the wrong definition. Don't seeking after signs is not the same thing as a sign I give unto you, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Oh, we shouldn't be seeking for that sign, Travis. We're an adulterous, unfaithful generation. <laughs> no, that is a conjunction in the heavens giving you a date. And we are told by Joseph Smith that once we are baptized, we look for those signs in the heavens. And so then they go on to talk about two great categories of signs. Uh, the second coming, the restoration of the kingdom, and the calamities to come. So what is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints trying to tell us from this? Well, this is where... No, they don't get into it here yet. But yes, this is the kingdom. Thy kingdom come by destroying the United States of America. <clears throat> And, uh, wait a minute, maybe this, no, no, it's close. Gathering together all of the keys and powers and glories revealed from the days of Adam, it's close. But no, that, yeah, they talk about getting those keys in section 110. They don't talk about Moses' keys. <laughs> it's always Elijah's keys. You notice that? And then they turn it into genealogy work and sealing in child bride polygamy for the celestial kingdom rather than the survival of the human race. The father shall become the son. The son shall become the father through sex. You need to start having babies. And so the promised results of wickedness, right, Todd? The church set you up, and they betrayed you with their extortion threat of you to have you do, have you become a weapon against me, your older brother. And so they claim that the wicked will lose the spirit of the Lord. Ooh, so scary. <laughs> Dear God, such cognitive dissonance. And then Melvin J. Ballard. Hey, he's still alive. Barely. <laughs> uh, and so he's talking about the fact that God is speaking through the elements, the earthquakes, the seas heaving itself beyond its bounds. This was before 2000. Oh, it's your daddy. This is Senior Ballard, not Junior Ballard. October 1923. From the conference report, page 31. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. well, and so, yeah, there, he's. I don't know why they didn't put in the actual scripture from the Doctrine and Covenants on this, but they do above that. And then quote from Ballard Sr. Uh, and then they're quoting from Brigham Young, 15 July, 1860. Do you think there is calamity abroad now among the people? Not much. All we have yet heard and all we have experienced is scarcely a preface to the sermon that is going to be preached when the testimony of the elders ceases to be given. And thus Heber C. Kimball, come home missionaries. But it's the Christ who will call the missionaries home, not Nelson. <clears throat> well, 
when the testimony of the elders ceases to be given and the Lord says to them, that, that's where Heber got it from apparently, or they're misquoting, <laughs> come home, I will now preach my own sermons to the nations of the earth through YouTube that will be silenced because of the Church of Jesus Christ giving orders to YouTube. <clears throat> All you now know can scarcely be called to a preface to the sermon. Earthquakes, thunders, lightnings, knock, knock, knock on wood, fearful destruction. Uh, what matters? What matters? The destruction of a few railway cars. You will hear a mag of magnificent cities now idolized by the people sinking into the earth, entombing the inhabitants. The sea will have it will heave itself beyond its bounds, engulfing mighty cities. Famines will spread over the nations. And the nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, states against states. In our own country and in foreign lands. Time after time, the Lord has warned. Okay. And then six. The Lord will preserve his people. But this is the big thing. When you hear of the warning of utter destruction, you not just leave the church, you've got to leave the land. That's why I started off with talking about Iceland, world wars, and the current condition with the Palestinians in Gaza who are an anomaly because of Islamic teachings. <clears throat> for Islam, it is a holy war, and they are promised blessings for their sacrifice of 72,000 child bride virgins. Just 72. And so, yes, they've got a big motivation religiously brainwashing them. That's why Islamic women who are freed and given refuge here in America stay with Islam because they weren't really wanting to be free of their supposed claim to oppression by their patriarchal abusers. It is those Islamic women who give up their religion in America, not just because they uncover their face. They have to put away their religion if they are serious about being abused. So instead, what you see are too many Islamic women who are still loyal to the patriarchal abuse. They are liars and deceivers. They want to live in both worlds. They are sleeper cells. Right, Mormons? Who know the church is wrong. Who know that the church is abusing them, extorting them, robbing them, using their tithing against them, and stay in the church. can't live in both worlds. If you know the religion is wrong, you need to leave. But in this particular case, the land also is in great jeopardy here, just like it is in the Middle East. And the Lord will preserve his people only if the Mormons will hearken to their Christ and leave the church and leave Babylon. Joseph Smith history, verse 40. Remember, it's not Jesus.
And so how to escape the calamities and God's judgments? Well, yeah, I just told you. And then Woodruff. Jo oh, oh, oh. Joseph Fielding Smith. Is this it? No, but it's setting up for it. He's the one from the, the book. See? The church must stand independent. <laughs> mm-hmm. You are not independent when you are supporting one side over the other. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's what they're trying to do, at least appear to be. They're trying to be independent. That's why they come out with the first presidency statements about the war in Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine needs to surrender so that there can be peace. In Armageddon, Israel must cease fire. We don't like violence. That is not remaining independent. The church needs to stand up against wickedness and denounce it by name. They needed to stand up and condemn a certain president for being a racist, bigot, anti-Semite, sexist. They didn't. Instead, they embraced him, were loyal to him, paid the Judas price to betray the Mormons. Right, Senator Hatch? Oh, you're dead now? And so conditions, yeah, we've all seen the conditions, but they're taking the Gospels as literal history. As the Lord spoke to his disciples on the Mount of Olives, three days before his crucifixion. On what? A pole, right? The Jewish authors purposely put a cross. Romans didn't use crosses. Christians want to change history to say that the Romans did use crosses because Jesus is a testimony of that. No. It's a sign in the heavens. Lift it up on the cross. Three days of darkness. Cross. I've showed you the picture even recently. It's the three days of darkness. Three hours on the cross of darkness. Three days of darkness in the tomb of death. That's what the Jewish author is symbolizing with all this. This is not literal history. He's giving you the dates the days and the hours. And yet, there was a Christian who thought he knew better and copied the original Matthew and added, no man knows the day or the hour in that very chapter. And so, Christ's appearance to mankind. I think it's under Christ's appearance to Mormons. Is it? Nope. Summary is the last one, so it's in this one. He'll make some appearances to specific groups. I've already done the two. <laughs> the Adam on the Almond. Well, three now. Adam on the Almond, Magog and Magog, and Jerusalem. <laughs> and so now we're waiting for the Mormon one. Yep, where you'll be caught up to meet him in the clouds. 
as the Cylons do not fear death, they believe in the one true God. So say we all, by your command. Uh, the appearance at the city of New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Suddenly come to a Salt Lake City temple. Do anybody pay attention to the pictures that I make for you? There's symbolism meaning in them. That's what you were supposed to catch on when I did that one. And that was recent, wasn't it? Uh, and there's Adam on Diamon. And here's the quoting. Uh, yeah, Elder Joseph Fielding Smith wrote, Not many years hence there shall be another gathering of high priests and righteous souls in the same valley of Adam on Diamond. At this gathering, which the first gathering, uh, there he's quote they're quoting from section 116. Oops, forged document of the Danites, whose headquarters was Adam on Diamond. They were revealing their plot to overthrow America instead. Because there is no Jesus. That was your first clue. And so this is the plot. There will stand before him those who have held the keys of all dispensations who shall render up their stewardship to the first patriarch of the race who hold the keys of salvation. No, that's just Elishua from the section 110. It's not Elias, it's Elishua. I've gone over that with you multiple times. Over 3.2K videos. In this council, Christ will take over the reins of government. Really? So an exclusive Council, secret, shh, don't tell, and Adam on Diamond, Jesus will be given the government without the government leaders. <laughs> Wait, it's more, there's more, and the kingdom and dominions and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven and the earth shall be given to the saints of the Most High. Wait a minute, Most High is Emmanuel, not Jesus. Hmm, is he replacing Emmanuel? Yes. Just like on the Nauvoo Temple. Until this Grand Council is held, Satan shall hold, shall rule, shall hold rule, in the nations of the earth. But at that time, Adam on Diamon, shh, don't tell the governments we took over the governments. Thrones are to be cast down, and man's rule shall come to an end. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> then shall Lucifer give the government to the saints? No, to Jesus. He's misquoting. They're, he's being misquoted here. Let's read it to you from his actual book that they purposely misquoted. <clears throat> By the voice of the priesthood, on page 290 in this edition, this council in the valley of Adam on Diamond is to be of the greatest importance to this world. At that time, there will be a transfer of authority from the usurper and imposter, Lucifer, to the rightful king, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Ju Lucifer will be in attendance. And say, here's the government of all the world, not just the United States. It's yours. When this gathering is held, the world will not know of it. The members of the church at large will not know of it. Oops, I found out. And the church <laughs> punished me. 
as I'm now here because of finding out about this. This I keep as the bookmark because it was their death threat to me. We know you better be silent or we're going to utterly destroy you. They tried. They failed. I'm here now. And had you been watching all this time, you would have seen what happened to me. You would also know that I had another channel, TWG. Because of YouTube's attacks by the orders of the church. Yet it shall be preparatory to the coming in the clouds of glory. The mushroom clouds of glory. The world cannot know of it. The saints cannot know of it. Except those who officially shall be called into this council. Shall precede the coming of Jesus Christ as the thief in the night. That's not the right one. <laughs> the enemy is what they're talking about for the thief in the night. And for that, we will close with... Am I going to be doing this tomorrow? We'll see. It's 9 o'clock right now. I've had this habit lately, haven't I? I've been getting lazy, and <laughs> so things get put off. <laughs> Joseph Smith, in section 101, gives a parable for the latter days, starting in verse 43. So in 51, this is what is actually the case that Mormons need to fear and tremble for that I've been warning about, that I've told you, Islam has Utah Valley for Salt Lake as the highest concentration of Islamic centers. This isn't because of religious freedom that Utah offers them. <laughs> Even though the church has also helped with this, betraying you, they are purposely positioned to strike at key places for a burn pit. And so here it is. The enemy came by night. This is the valley here. Broke down the hedge and the servants, it's the prophets, not you. You're the twelve olive trees, the house of Israel. The manual lied to you. I did the videos. The prophets of Jesus arose, were affrighted, and fled. They betray you. And the enemy destroyed the works. Broke down the olive trees. This is where it begins upon the whole world. Can I find it? Begin at my house. Section ninety four. No. Section 112. And we can start with verse 22 because Mormons aren't obeying this. Inasmuch as Mormons shall humble themselves before me and abide in my word and hearken to the voice of my spirit, verily, verily, I say unto you, darkness covereth the earth and gross darkness the minds of the people. 
and all flesh has become corrupt before my face. Behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation, as a whirlwind it shall come upon the face of the earth, saith the Lord, and upon my house shall it begin. We are told the 9-11 event for Armageddon, and it wasn't Israel. And from my house shall it go forth, saith the Lord. First, among Mormons, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name, and have not known me, and have blasphemed against me in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. Remember, not Jesus. Are you denying your Christ? Do you profess the wrong Christ? Or will you give up your false religion? Or will you continue to be wicked? This is the warning I've been giving you all these years. I've been waiting for this day for all of my life. Oh Lord, I can feel it coming in the air. So say we all. So say we all.